this video, I will be attempting to make a game in under two weeks to potentially win more than $30,000 in prizes. What you're seeing here is the game I made for the Pirate Software Annual Game Jam, where thousands of people entered for a chance of glory. It started with thousands of us anxiously waiting, watching the stream for the topic to be announced. We went through a voting process to choose the theme, and the theme ended up being, drumroll please, it's Freddy. So I put my thinking cap on and started going through some ideas. The first thoughts that came to my mind was zombie virus, spreading seeds of flowers, spreading joy, and a bunch of corny ideas that I was sure a bunch of people were gonna choose. I really wanted to create something unique, something I could call my own. Even if I don't end up winning, I could potentially take this project further. I also gave myself the challenge to not use any commercial assets for this game, excluding sound effects, because I can't do sound yet. Anyways, the idea of quantum entanglement has always fascinated me. Quantum entanglement is the phenomenon in quantum physics, where two or more particles become interconnected, regardless of the distance between them. The state of one particle directly influences the state of the other, creating an intricate web of connections that defies classical intuition. Basically, if the particles are entangled, physical properties such as position, momentum, spin, and polarizations are perfectly correlated between them. So if one rotates, another one rotates in the same manner. So using that concept and gamifying it, I came up with the idea of spreading some sort of entanglement energy through a bunch of objects and manipulating those objects in a strategic manner to ultimately solve puzzles. I jumped into Blender and began visualizing this idea, trying to wrap my head around its concepts, starting to think of the possibilities of how I can design puzzles accordingly. Growing up, I fell in love with Portal and was captivated by the idea of creating my own puzzle shooter someday. The unique way of traversing the map to solve puzzles in Portal left a lasting impression on me. And I drew inspiration from that experience to fuel my own creative journey. Instead of making a proper game design document, like I probably should have, I just delved straight into the prototyping phase. So I started with putting these objects in the world. Let's call them intangibles. When an intangible is shot by entanglement projectile, it will become entangled. Subsequently, I can manipulate these entangled objects by synchronously rotating them. Doing that, I can now use them to get to certain areas. I also made the material change when the object is entangled. I blocked out some puzzle ideas. Entanglement projectiles can also phase through objects, spreading the entanglement energy. I'll put a pin in that for now. So static intangibles are pretty boring, so I made some of them move. Maybe I could incorporate some sort of timing into my game. I also gave myself the ability to retract all entanglements. I started experimenting with how I could design puzzles for the game, working through some rough ideas. So in my books, we call this good enough and move on to the art of the game. As I said, I wanted to make everything myself and really challenge myself to come up with something that's completely unique. I started looking for some inspiration for an art style and character. My initial thoughts was something low poly, but then I felt like something vibrant, realistic, and high tech could be the way to go. That's what I like. Anyways, cue the time lapses. So let's call this V1 of my entangle boy. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Before I went any further, I wanted to figure out my animations pipeline. My go to for animations is usually Mixamo but I knew it would not really work good with a robot unless I'm willing to sacrifice quality. I knew I had to probably go the retargeting route, so I started experimenting of how I'm going to rig this thing. I set up a starter retargeting setup for the robot, and I got to something with a bit of potential. So I got my workflow for animations out the way, and now I can definitely get overly distracted and keep adding a ton of details to my robot. I wanted him to look like a robot that would fit into the quantum physics style. I drew inspiration from a bunch of parts, one even being the Large Hydrant Collider. So I kept experimenting with the loop. Here's where concept art could have been very useful, but I can't draw. So doing it this way is just my process by now. I finally got to something I like, and I moved on to the texture. I used the Quixel Mega Scans library for metallic textures, and I asked Jarvis to throw a little hot rod red in there. Back to retargeting. I retargeted all my animations I needed and started setting up the movement for my character. I gave him complex movement, and also leg eye care and foot rotation so you can correctly interact with the world. 
I'm really happy I took the time to make a character that I love. It just inspired me so much to keep on pushing with this game. Next up to design was the entanglement rifle. By the way, please comment some suggestions for better names for all this stuff. I basically just put entangle in front of anything at this point. I started with the animations for holding a gun. I modeled the V1 of the rifle and gave it to a trusty bot. Added some sweet stuff like aim offset as well so his body rotates with the camera and smooth zoom for aim. I made a cool emitter for entanglement projectiles he shoots. The projectile also bounces off everything except the intangibles, but I later ended up removing that as well. For now, I am happy with my character and I felt like working on something else for a bit. Because of the time constraint, I really wanted some sort of system to build all these levels. I liked the idea of a tile type aesthetic. I could easily scale these buildings and then decorate them with a bunch of cool items. I moved on to make some sliding doors as well so I can move on to different sections of this game. But now I kind of decided that it will all take place on some sort of spaceship. So I felt like this prototype was cool but I also felt like I was going a bit off track in regards to the theme. I realized that there will only be a few cases here and there where the entanglement will actually spread from one platform to another. So I had the thought of making more intangibles. I started with something I ended up calling an entangled generator. Entangled generators generate this entangled energy. And in order to spread this entangled energy, I built what I would call entangled spreaders. Seriously, I really need to think of better names for this. They would basically carry over all the entangled energy from one to another, taking it all the way to the door locks. I gave the intangibles a really cool looking blue metallic aesthetic. I then designed what would be level 1. I wanted it to be rather simplistic and good introduction to the mechanics of the game. I moved on to designing the next level. Here I wanted things to start getting more and more complex. The entangled generators all have to be switched on at the same time in order to be able to unlock the door simultaneously. I also wanted to introduce a new intangible every level to keep the game interesting. I also wanted some sort of puzzles. I made these colored puzzles where you could entangle each room. I was inspired by Rubik's Cubes. I only made it so you have to solve each face, and only the rows could rotate. Making a full Rubik's Cube setup seemed like it would be a little too complicated to solve, or actually a lot. When the game starts, the cube will also be put in a random configuration every time, so it will never be the same. So you probably noticed this, but the robot's feet kind of face to the floor a bit. I really tried to fix this in the retargeting process, but it would just not end up working. The solution that ended up working was just moving the camera to a better spot, to sort of hide the feet when walking and running. And I actually really like the way games like Years of War did their third person. It also allows for a bigger portion of the screen to be visible for the puzzle solving. I felt like this change really made everything feel a lot more premium instantly. Anyways, back to the game. I made all these little improvements along the way of designing this game. I made this particle fix with Niagara motors to come out the gun when shooting along with some visual upgrades every now and then to the bot. I wanted the next level to be even bigger and better. One thing that I wanted in my game was really fun traversal. So the next intangible I made was a catapult. An awesome way to cross to the other side. I also made this cool looking bolt, and I made these interactable vault keys you would find across the map. If you fight all three, the vault would open. These were the core new mechanics for my third level. In my third level, I updated the color puzzles a bit and let the entangled generator spawn under a random color puzzle in a certain range. Just so that if you end up dying or redoing the level, it's never the same. So let's talk about dying in this game. I played around with the idea of lava and it would probably have worked, but I did just didn't feel like it fitted in my game. Since it's like a spaceship, where would you even find lava in space? I then proceeded to model these turning swords that would cut you up if you fall into them. Anyways, you can now die and respawn. Some more work was done on the level and I proceeded to move on. I wanted to also work in some sort of story as I go. The story was that you are the 727th version of an AI that was in training. You'd have to solve these puzzles to train yourself and you would ultimately use the training to solve the puzzle of life itself. I don't really know, I'm no writer. <laughs> I only had about enough time to make one more level. Designing this puzzle took a lot more brain capacity than I initially budgeted for. And the last thing I wanted was rushed puzzles. As always, I introduced a new mechanic or two into this level. The first being these reflectors that would reflect the projectile. You would have to shoot them at just the right spot to activate the generator. 
and these generators would activate what would be my second mechanic, a cannon, that would shoot out a vault key for you to catch. So you need a bit of skill to time this right as well. I also changed the retraction code a bit, so now it will retract either the intangible you're aiming at, or the last one you entangle. And it also bring a projectile back to you. With the last level being done, I proceeded to spend a whole day finding and implementing the right sign effects for this game. I found some cool royalty free soundtracks as well. I proceeded to integrate some story and explainers using my voice. I just altered it to sound like it's coming through a speaker. Hi, you're Roy. Welcome to the Celestial Phoenix. And I felt like this was a really cool touch. A cherry on top, if you will. Spent the last bit of time ironing out some bugs and finally I was ready to submit my project. I honestly learned so much in this project and I'm really proud of how it came out. It's nowhere near a perfect game, but my skills evolved so much with this project. I really feel like I could turn this into a real game in the future. So please, if you have any suggestions on how this game would be better, feel free to let me know. I thought of maybe implementing an ammo system to the intangibles, or like taking the retraction mechanic out completely. I don't know, to be honest, I would love to get some feedback. In the description of the video, I added the link where you can download this game and try it for yourself. I'd love to see some of you play it. As a game dev, there's no bigger reward than seeing someone actually enjoying your game. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this game. Subscribe to my channel and I aim to provide amazing content and value for you, my awesome subscribers. As always, thanks for watching.